I play a competitive game, my first goal is usually to get a good economy going. Now that usually means building special buildings or locking down valuable resources and getting to a point where money isn't really a concern for me and I can focus on other things. But Castles of Mad King Ludwig handles things a little differently and that's what I want to talk about today. See, there are a lot of great mechanics in castles, but without the way that it handles its economy, I honestly don't think they would be anywhere near as good of a game. I talked in the rules explanation about how the master builder both sets prices for rooms and is the one getting paid when those rooms are bought by other players. And that changes everything. And because this is the internet, here are my top five ways it does that. As the master builder, you'll need to gamble on whether or not other players will be willing to pay for the rooms you need them to buy. And sometimes you will have enough money that this won't be stressful at all, but occasionally you're going to need specific players to buy specific rooms so that you can make your game-winning play. And when that happens, the tension is gut-wrenching. In a good way. In most games, money usually only goes from the bank to the players and back again, and occasionally goes between players themselves. But Castles reverses that. Now, you will get money from the bank occasionally, but most of your income comes from other players, which means that if they're all poor, you probably won't be getting rich this turn. That being said, because each player gets to be the master builder, no one really stays poor that long. Even if you make bad plays, you'll usually get at least some money from other players. Now, most games have some kind of allowance, but this is more interesting because... Almost everything you buy will affect other players somehow. Now, while it's common in games for people to be fighting over purchase options, when you add this game's economic system into the mix, it forces you to pay that much more attention to what other players are doing. Where otherwise this game could easily be multiplayer solitaire, the addition of the Master Builder forces indirect conflict between players by, once again... I know I said this already, but that's because it all comes full circle. As the master builder, you want players to not be able to afford the rooms you don't want them to get and to pay through the nose for the rooms you do want them to get. But because you know that that's what they're doing, you still have to gamble even when you're not the master builder. So you need to guess what they want based on their placements so that you can try to deny them that by either buying the room that they don't want you to buy, uh, buying a room they didn't expect you to buy, or not buying a room at all, sacrificing points in the hopes that it hurts them more. So that was a long-winded way of saying, good job, castles. You made a good game, and I really like this specific mechanic. Diving into rules like this is obviously something I'm interested in, so if there's a game that has a specific mechanic that you really like, why don't you tell me about it in the comments below, or tweet me at RTFM Show. Next week, I'm going to be giving some actual strategy tips for castles, and this is a game that I'm kind of good at, so it might be worth watching. We'll see. Bye!